Hello programs, it's Ruza and welcome back to this week's episode of What The FX. I'm going to be breaking down my top 12 picks for some really bad CGI. It's important to remember here guys that there are real people involved in creating these visual effects. Being in the field, I understand that it is an immensely complex task. So when a visual effect doesn't quite work out, it's probably because of a bunch of factors. Maybe it's time, maybe it's creative direction. So just bear that in mind when we break down these top 12 picks. Let's count them down. Coming down at number 12, we've got Batman Forever from 1995. Now granted, back then visual effects were only coming into their own, but some of the city shots were really looking cheesy. It could have been from an animated show. They could have used miniatures, Star Wars did it, and they did it way before them. So there's no excuse here for a big budget film to have it look that cheesy. And let's not forget about bat nipples. So coming in at number 11, we've got Dragonheart from 1996. And as you can see from the shot, there's some compositing issues which really break the illusion of the visual effect they're trying to pull off. Coming in at number 10, we've got Star Wars A New Hope, the remastered version. When Han Solo meets Jabba in the starport, it just looks off. The compositing is wrong, even when he steps over his tail, it just doesn't look right. They should have just left it out to begin with. Also, Han shot first. Coming in at number 9, we've got Air Force One and the plane crash. Now. Particle physics weren't quite up to scratch back in 1997. If it were me, I would have made a remote control 747 and crashed that thing into a simulated water environment. It probably would have looked a thousand times better and it probably would have been a lot cheaper. Coming in at number eight, we've got Spawn. Now I love Spawn, he's one of my favorite characters, but that movie was a CGI train wreck. A lot of the shots when he's in hell were very broken and very badly put together. Apparently, they were first time CG artists on that film, so much respect for them for trying, but it just didn't add up and it did not stand the test of time. Who can forget The Mummy Returns from 2001, which comes in at number seven, where they tried to turn the rock into this expressionless scorpion king. It was truly awful to behold. Now, Corridor Digital, who are VFX artists, actually redid that whole scene and fixed up his face. Go over to their channel and check out that video. It's really, really sick. Coming in at number six, we've got Scooby-Doo from 2001. And that demon that attacks Thelma, <sighs> just to simply stretch and manipulate a model like that is a big, big no-no. So I'm sorry, Scoobs, but you failed. So we all expect big things from a James Bond film, am I right? Well, Die Another Day from 2002 comes in at number five with Pierce Brosnan kite surfing down a gigantic glacial wave. Now they obviously used the blue screen, which you can clearly see because that light wrapping around Pierce Brosnan's face in a lot of those shots was badly, badly done. Coming in at number four may surprise you, so let me know in the comments below if you agree with the selection, but it's X-Men Origins Wolverine. That scene when he's in the bathroom and he's got his claws out, it's just, it breaks the illusion of the visual effect because it is not composited right and it really looks so fake. Let's not forget about the awful rendition of Deadpool. Coming in at number three, we've got the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2 from 2012, guys. I mean, just get a real baby. Just get a real baby. Enough said. So there's no real order to these, but coming in at number two is Ultraviolet from 2006. Now, if you haven't seen this flick, go and watch it because I don't know how some of these VFX shots made it through post-production. It will actually make you laugh. Some of the scenes, I was in stitches, I'm just saying. Now coming in at number one, we've got Superman from the Justice League in 2017. That shot where they had to take out his mustache, it's just really, really awful and really, really fake. I, I feel sorry for the VFX artists that had to work on that. Now there is a guy on YouTube called Jarkin who does a lot of deep fakes and he did a rendition of Superman overlaid with the original. And the deep fake version looks amazing compared to the original. Sure, the lighting may be a bit off, but compared to the original, it's chalk and cheese. So those are my top 12 picks for some really bad CGI in movies. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think is a really bad CGI moment in a movie or a TV show or whatever. Just let me know in the comments below. It'd be really, really cool to hear your thoughts. That's Ruzi here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of What The FX. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next level. <laughs>